Funding for the First Lady series is provided by Patreon supporters. To become a Patreon supporter, please click the link found in the description box below this video. Sarah Childress was the third born of six in 1803 to Elizabeth Whitsitt and Joel Childress, a prominent planter, merchant, and land speculator. She was well educated for a woman of her time and place, attending the exclusive Morovian Salem Academy in Winston-Salem, North Carolina in 1817, one of the few institutions of higher learning available to women in the early 19th century. Sarah met James K. Polk while both were receiving instructions from Samuel P. Black at his house, Murph's Free Borough, Tennessee. He was 19, she was 12. They would be formally introduced in the early 1820s with Polk's involvement with the state legislature. In 1823, the two became engaged, and on January 1st, 1824, Sarah, age 20, married James Polk, age 28 at the plantation home of the bride's parents near Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Of their 25 years of marriage, they would never have children, often attributed to the bladder stone surgery James had as a young man making him sterile. They were the only presidential couple to never have children while together, biologically adopted or from previous marriage. During James Polk's political career, Sarah assisted her husband with his speeches, gave him advice on policy matters, and played an active role in his campaigns. In Washington, D.C., as a congressman's wife during the administration of John Quincy Adams, Andrew Jackson, and Martin Van Buren, Sarah very much enjoyed her social duties. In 1845, Sarah Polk became the 11th First Lady of the United States. She was lively, charming, intelligent, and and a good conversationalist. While she enjoyed politics, she also cautioned her husband, whose health was never robust against overwork. A devout Presbyterian, as First Lady, she banned dancing, card games, and hard liquor at office receptions. Unlike Julia Tyler's waltzes, the Polk entertainments were sedate and sober affairs, which earned the First Lady the nickname Sahara Sarah. After attending the inauguration of Zachary Tyler, after attending the inauguration of Zachary Taylor on March 5, 1849, Sarah and her husband left by horse and carriage to their new home, Polk Place, in Nashville, Tennessee. Upon arriving to the Polk's disappointment, Polk Place was not yet finished. They then went from Nashville to Columbia to spend two weeks with her mother-in-law before going to spend a few days in Murfreesboro with her family before returning to Nashville. Three months later, James Polk died of cholera. Having had the shortest retirement of any U.S. president, Sarah faced small financial difficulties throughout her widowhood. Her primary form of income was coming in through a plantation she inherited from her husband. She was forced to sell the plantation before the American Civil War in 1861. Later, she received money through her younger brother, John Childress. Starting in 1884, the United States government granted Sarah Polk a pension of $5,000 a year. During the American Civil War, Sarah was officially neutral but she indicated sentiments in favor of preserving the Union during periodic visits to her home by several Union commanders. However, as a traditional Southern woman, she also gave mention to Confederate sympathies during visits from Confederate generals in Nashville, where Sarah would spend over 42 years of her widowhood. Sarah Polk lived at Polk Place for 42 years, the longest retirement and widowhood of any former U.S. First Lady and always wore black as a true Victorian widow. Sarah Polk died on August 14, 1891 at age 87, less than a month before her 88th birthday. She was buried next to her husband originally at their home in National Tennessee, and was later re-entered with him at the Tennessee State Capitol when Polk Place was demolished in 1901.